Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tetacom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing a rumour that's popped up over the past 24 or so hours, and that is concerning Intel and a supposed 10-core mainstream CPU that the company are working on known as Comet Lake. This actually comes at a perfect time. Just yesterday, I put out a video asking you what you expect from the Ryzen 3000 series of processors from AMD in terms of core count. I'll put the results on screen from a poll that I published, but you can see that a lot of folks were expecting an increase in core count, but a basically equal amount were also just not really caring about additional cores so much as what they did want was improved IPC and clock speed. But, you know, the fact of the matter is there are definitely people who do expect a core count increase, and Intel, at least if these rumors are accurate, have you covered. So this CPU, known as Comet Lake, is by no means confirmed. It popped up on a Taiwanese forum, and that forum has had some reputation for good leaks in the past, but is this one accurate? Uh, well, I'm going to leave that to your imagination for now. So at the best, put, you know, a grain of salt, preferably a truckload of salt with this particular rumor until we get further confirmation. But anyway... The rumor alleges that we see a 10 core part from Intel. There is no information regarding clock speed, but it is going to be built on the 14nm process, which is, well, interesting to say the least. And furthermore, that the actual bus structure of this chip is going to be a dual ring bus design, which is going to be a little different, of course, to how Intel currently do things. A single bus design, yes, technically could handle uh, 10 cores, but allegedly, anyway, they're not doing that for whatever reason. Now, the fact that they're putting this out on a 14nm process probably tells us that the CPU is going to come out sooner rather than later, assuming, once again, that the rumor is accurate. So it's possible that Intel are looking at this as like a way to counter AMD and the Ryzen 3000 series, which begs a couple of questions. Is it because they don't feel that they can compete in IPC in the short term, and therefore they know that they have to put this process out just because, well, they can't compete in IPC, so basically they're getting a role reversal. Intel have more cores and AMD have higher clock speeds. Or is it because they're like, oh, AMD are bumping the core count up again, right? So it's possible that they obviously have a good indicator of what AMD are doing, and by a good indicator, they probably have a bloody good idea of what AMD are doing. And therefore, they're like, well, AMD are going to be increasing the core count. Therefore, we need to increase the core count. One definite advantage AMD have, of course, is that Southern and M processors, technically speaking, scale better. Of course, we don't know the exact layout of either the CCXs of AMD's processors yet. And we also don't know the full die sizes. I mean, there are estimates online, but an estimate is not the same thing as an actual, actual approximate measurement from AMD themselves, right? From actual physical die. So at the moment, a lot of it is like, you know, pretty close. But how that stacks up to a real Ryzen 3000 series CPU and what parts and what things they're going to actually have in a Ryzen 3000 CPU, once again, one theory that's going around is that they might have an iGPU, but they might not. Maybe they're just going to go with as many cores as possible, which is certainly a good philosophy. Now, in case you're wondering, back there is an i9-19900K, and I am currently doing a review of it. Well, actually, I've pretty much done all of the testing. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, it's a really nice motherboard. It's a really nice processor. But as we all know, the i9-19900K and its 8 cores, 16 threads, uh, running up to 5 gigahertz, of course, if only a single thread is being really pushed, kind of runs hot. How hot? really depends, of course, on how much juice you're putting into it, whether you're overclocking it, what your cooling solution is, silicon lottery, and so much more besides. I mean, even a crappy application of thermal paste could uh, bump up the temperatures. But, you know, our chip, uh, which is an engineering sample, I want to stress that we actually have two chips, but I'm just using one uh, because uh, we were sent to basically by mistake, and so we're actually and using one sample. Our chip gets to the high 60s to low 70s, depending. Uh, certain tests like AVX really pushes the temperatures up. 
But, you know, if you're just doing CPU-Z tests, you know, like uh, stress tests, then certainly the high 60s is probably going to be about the highest uh, that the chip goes. And that is leaving the uh, chip to do default uh, voltages. If we kind of dial in the voltages ourselves and, you know, clock the chip, uh, ourselves and we get it certainly slightly uh, to a better temperature if we manually dial in the voltages and you know kind of go with the that way of doing things but I, I'm kind of digressing the point is that I wonder what the thermal headroom is with Intel there are several solutions one they could just go with a larger die um, which obviously would have the ability to then be better cooled. After all, a larger surface area allows them to pull more heat off. And, but then theoretically speaking, that means that you're going to have a different cooler maybe or something like that or a completely different socket type. That's certainly a possibility. So it could be a larger chip like Threadripper or something along those lines. Another possibility is that they might just go with lower clock speeds. Let's see, rather than, than bumping the core clocks up or keeping them identical, they simply lower them a little bit by several hundred megahertz. That might also work, or perhaps as refinements once again to the 14NM process. It's going to be fascinating though, and I, I do wonder what AMD's thinking is going to be here. I know I keep saying this, but AMD actually are in a really good position because they can kind of dictate a lot of this a lot of stuff and they don't really need to worry about necessarily making a completely wrong move because if they just decide well the 3700x is going to be a eight core part 16 threads we're not going to bump the uh, we're not going to bump the cores out for that generation but we're just going to focus on ipc we're going to focus on clock speed and we're going to release the part as cheap as possible they're probably good i mean let's just be honest for gaming they don't really need to bump the core clocks up. You know, in 2020, maybe, when the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox uh, Scarlet are released, we don't know what the state of their CPUs is going to be. I can probably guess that they're going to be eight cores, or at least eight physical threads. The rumors are it's going to be an eight-core CPU in the PlayStation 5, but with higher clock speeds. So we can presume, therefore, that AMD might just decide, well, as long as we've got eight physical threads with a really nice, healthy clock speed, we're probably going to be okay with the PlayStation 5. And since they're the folks who are developing the CPU for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Scarlet, although the Scarlet's not 100% confirmed, for gaming anyway, they have a fair idea of what to do. So, but for content creation and that type of area, they might decide to also release what could be considered a Ryzen 9, which might be like a special chip, which has, I don't know, let's say 12 cores, just for sake of argument, it has a slight lower clock speed, and it focuses on just raw multi-threading throughput. But it's designed for fit people who don't really need the additional PCIe slots. They don't need all of that stuff. The only issue with that, of course, is I do wonder how AMD's cache structure is going to deal with only... Uh, dual channel memory it might be really memory sensitive so i might be let's say the 3700x is a 12 core part i might be telling you all in like i don't know half a year or a year's time or whenever it's going to be released uh, guys if you want to buy this feel free it's a nice processor but i would highly recommend that you have very fast ddr4 memory approaching 4000 megahertz because otherwise you're definitely going to notice that when you're already uh, hammering the cpu uh, you're not just going to have enough memory bandwidth and you're going to get some issues there. So either way, from Intel's point of view, it is curious. Um, and I would have liked for this processor to be on 10NM. Maybe they don't feel they're going to have the yield yet. We know that they are uh, bolstering their manufacturing capacity for 14NM. So either way, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this. Uh, and as for pricing, that's also going to be the question. We can presume that we're not going to see a pricing uh, any better than the 9900K. For the 9900K at the moment, it's like five, six hundred US dollars, which is not cheap. Uh, let's just be honest, that's, that's a hefty amount of cash. And I love the 9900K. I, I think it's an amazing processor, and for people who want the best possible frame rates in games, but also want to do like encoding and other bits and pieces, but you don't necessarily need HUDT levels of CPU cores, but what you do want is, you know, the best gaming performance and so on. This is a really nice processor, but it's a lot of money. And compared to like a Ryzen 7 2700X or what have you, it's, it's an awful lot of cash to ask. And the problem is when you're getting to that amount of money, 
if AMD do decide to just like reduce the uh, sorry increase the core count of Ryzen like free, uh, sorry the Threadripper 3000 series, you could presumably get like a, a 16 core Threadripper you know 3000 series for really cheap. And then you've got that like duality of like, well, okay, I can have like a 16 core part from uh, AMD for like, like 700, 600 US dollars. And I also get quad channel memory and I get these additional PCIe lanes, or I can go with Intel and get this really blazing uh, single thread performance. And either way, you know what? To me, this is just fantastic. Whether you're uh, someone who prefers Intel, someone who prefers AMD or or someone more like myself who just wants the best value product for whatever cash I have to spend. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the rather shorter video today. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.